Hey everyone, do you like classic science fiction television from the 60s? Well today I've got two books right here that you might just be crazy about. First off, um, we've got the International Rescue Thunderbirds uh, Agent's Technical Manual from Haynes. Now Haynes, some of you might know, does a lot of cross um, uh, uh, cutouts of sort of vehicles, cars, and whatnot. Um, but lately they've been doing uh, sort of uh, cutaways of famous science fiction vehicles from comic books and stuff like Star Trek and Star Wars. Um, but I really was excited to see that they had done one for the Thunderbirds. This book is really um, just chock full of stuff. It's not just about the vehicles. You have detailed uh, cutaway diagrams of Tracy Island and the launch bays for the different Thunderbirds. Um, you have sort of these miniature bios about uh, the, th the International Rescue People, the Tracys, uh, Tintin, even Grandma. And the illustrations I love in this are really nice. They're not they're not done with uh, digital coloring or CG. They're done with, you know, uh, it looks like I think maybe either watercolor or gouache uh, paintings. Uh, really nice. It, it definitely has that 60s charm about it because of that. Um, and you have all the different vehicles that, uh, that are the secondary vehicles that would uh, be put into the pods of Thunderbird 2. Uh, and there's just tons of different uh, details about it each vehicle and just all the technology that goes into it. I don't even think that some of this stuff was even considered when the original TV show was aired. They just kind of are sort of um, mythologizing or sort of uh, explaining how some of these technologies worked. And Fab 2, which I kind of forgot existed, but yeah, they did have a boat called Fab 2. And then in the back there's this brief episode guide um, basically called Mission Files. This book, the tone of this book is not really talking about this as a TV show, but as the real events, real vehicles that exist. Um, so it has that sort of tone. Um, and I, I really, I really enjoyed it all. I wish that it did cover the movies, uh, where you had diagrams of like the Zero X vehicle, which is actually my favorite vehicle from the Thunderbirds uh, franchise. Um, that and the Skyship from Thunderbirds 6, and uh, some of like the vehicles like uh, the hell the attack chopper that the Hood pilots in uh, Thunderbirds are go. But um, definitely a worthwhile uh, book to get. Tons of just wonderful information in there. It's, Published by uh, ITV Studios Global Entertainment, and it's, I think, I don't, I have not seen this over in America, so I'm thinking maybe this is an import from the UK because, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, uh, because it only has the pound uh, sign on the back, no dollar pricing. Both of these books I got off of a website called Fab Gear USA, and they are really cool. If you're into science fiction television shows and things, some movies, yeah, science fiction and uh, TV and movies from the 60s and 70s, you'll love this site because it's got stuff for all kinds of those shows and movies, uh, CDs, you know, music, books, especially lots of books, models, Blu-rays and DVDs, of course, uh, I think some apparel maybe, um, but just all kinds of really cool gear and stuff um, for these, you know, franchises, all this merchandise, and it's wonderful. All the books that they have are really great. Um, that's why I found these. They have a lot of uh, Lost in Space stuff, which is getting to next. Uh, and speaking of which, Lost in Space is now having its 50th anniversary this year, which I'm very excited about because ever since I've been I can't remember, maybe five or six years old, I lo I've love. i loved the series. And I grew up with it um, in sort of the uh, the video store generation who, who discovered it when they were putting the episodes out on the, on the video. Uh, we rented it one night and uh, I just immediately fell in love. I mean, those first few episodes really did it though because they have so much 
Um, well, I'll be get in, getting into this in a later video, actually. I'm working on um, my favorite Lost in Space episodes, but the gist of it is that um, the sense of intrigue, mystery, uh, exploration, the music, certainly, and all the interesting vehicles and gadgets and stuff, and the chemistry with the characters is what really keeps the show um, alive today. And, you know, now we're having this amazing Blu-ray set being uh, produced and coming out in September, uh, you know, with very close involvement from the most of the living uh, stars of it, Billy Mooney, Angela Cartwright, uh, Mark Goddard, people, so on. Um, you know, they, they're involved, and then you have this, just them res restoring things from the from the original negatives and the original sound elements. Uh, it's just really heartwarming that they they cared enough and people cared enough to fund this, but I'm sure I'm sort of a minority in how in the age grouping. Uh, but uh, moving on to the next book uh, is the Lost in Space Encyclopedia 2. Yes, 2. Yeah, um, so this I also got off of Fab Year USA. I found it, or found it there was a kind of a Christmas present that I received. And uh, this book is really just stellar. Just uh, I honestly, I, I I probably will not be able to get through all of it uh, for years. Um, but just to kind of summarize what's in it, you've got. Uh, just sort of a, a general A to Z um, listing either things that are um, appearing in the show. I'll just give you an ex example of the kind of stuff. You've got um, things from reality like uh, constellations or uh, plants, uh, animals, rocks, minerals, uh, even a name that Dr. Smith called the robot here, a blatherskite, is according to the dictionary, is a person who talks at great length without making much sense. So you, you can just learn all kinds of things from this. Um, you have characters from the show, uh, which include some of like the strange abilities that they'd have. Um, probably ubiquitous among those abilities would probably be teleporting. Uh, Bugs Bunny, even because he just because he's mentioned in one episode by Dr. Smith. Uh, and lots of stuff like that, but it definitely uh, includes lots of interesting photographs. Um, a bunch of which I have not seen before, which is always great. Um, then you have um, a section which is about collectibles, and that goes through everything from toys to uh, model kits to uh, VHS. Uh, there's even a resurgence when the 1998 movie came out. Uh, there was a resurgence in interest in the classic series, so I saw a lot of... Um, a lot of toys that were marketing off of that. One of which was a Jupiter Two, authentic, like a Jupiter Two playset um, with like retractable legs and lights and sounds on it. I never got it, and I wanted to because now it's considered like an extremely rare toy. But one I did get during that sort of resurgence and in interest in Lost in Space was this guy, this Lost in Space robot. And if I can, danger, danger, Bill Robinson. Yeah. I want to wear out the batteries on that, but yeah, he's um, very much alive, and, and uh, arms pop out and whatnot, and uh, yeah, so I, I keep that around. Um, so yeah, you've got like stuff on the collectibles, then you have um, an episode guide, which is just sort of noting what stuff reappears in other episodes. Then, uh, one thing in the, uh, they do note all the different publications of Lost in, of, like, Lost in Space books, even ones that are more sort of fan publications. Uh, they have this, uh, all the hardware that was used in the episodes, mostly of it, like real existing computer hardware, stuff that they kind of repurposed in the show. Episodes of Lost in Space that never got made. There were a few scripts written um, in the third season when it was canceled, uh, or for, for a uh, fourth season that never happened. Um, and then there's also... Um, Search for Lost, for the Jupiter 2 artwork, so something chronicling um, all the artwork that appears on the walls in the Jupiter 2, just sort of tracking down what that was. I mean, this is really meticulous and very 
detail oriented, if you were the kind of person who, like I am, who really just kind of gets into all the background details, all the all of that stuff, you will really um, enjoy this. And uh, there's there's an evolution of an episode of Return from Outer Space, the one where Will uh, gets teleported back to Earth and has to try and uh, sort of convince the others that he's really Will Robinson. Uh, and that, that's, one, that's one of the best episodes, I think, and uh, it just details sort of the script process, um, all the different things that go into making, uh, the shooting and whatnot, there's even some storyboards that they put in here, and that's uh, very insightful, very helpful. Um, you have just a wealth of interviews, uh, the longest of which are, there are a, a few, there's two Jonathan Harris interviews which are the longest in the book, and um, I just started reading those, but they're great. Then you have a uh, fandom section, which you have like um, stuff about uh, conventions and fanzines, and they talk about all the fanzines. Um, now, this book itself kind of has the feel of a fan publication. I mean, it is a fan publication, but it, it does have that sort of uh, almost tone to it. It has that charm and whatnot. And, uh, I think, yeah, that's mostly what's in it. There's a small um, color photo section in the back, which, with some stuff that I haven't really seen, um, there's, uh, there's this nice photo in the back, actually, this color photo from, uh, I think, the Space Croppers, which was a black and white season one episode, but there's uh, Jonathan Harrison and Mercedes McCambridge, and I've never seen that uh, color photo before. This, this book is well worth getting. Um, like I said, you're a detail-oriented, die-hard fan, um, and as is this book. Um, I think, yeah, if, if you care about this, uh, these series as much as I do, you definitely want to have uh, something like this in your collection, because it's something that, you know, I can take my time, like, put it away, come back to it later, and just kind of read some more details from it, and it's, it's inspiring in a way, you know, just because I create a lot of stories and whatnot. Uh, I build up, you know, imaginary vehicles and design things like that with a story. So this is definitely a good thing to have in terms of, like, research and whatnot. And, and this as well, just to kind of learn about uh, TV history and just one of my favorite shows of all time. Now, um, I'll say that I think, I wish that uh, Lost in Space would get a, uh, a Haynes uh, guide, like, for the Jupiter 2 and the... Uh, the space pod and the chariot, um, you know, that would be wonderful. I don't, I don't know if it would be that thick of a book, but it, um, they would probably fit some other things in there as well. But, uh, yeah, and, um, definitely, yeah, definitely pick those up. Um, I just want to do this quick video vlog thing, just tell, letting you guys know about these wonderful products. Uh, and, um, yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll have more Lost in Space videos, um, maybe one or two coming up this year, just to coincide with the 50th anniversary. So, uh, thanks for watching. Lost in Space will return next week at its regular time over most of these stations. Over most of these stations. I said that. He said that.